Hey everyone, Dagger Shadow here for the very late update to the whole Patreon thing for all of you to know. Now for Gamerathon 3, which we've been building up for for so long now, the uh, total amount raised tallied up right now is $2,862 out of the 6000 projected needed for the full month which means remaining amount to go, 3,138. Time left, four months, and that would make the amount needed to be raised per month to be able to hit that target, $784.50. And yes, I'm still putting the 200 per month forward from the ad revenue, and that's going relatively well. I've hit equilibrium now, and I'm doing better than I was before the big boost. And I will be able to continue the 200, and if it increases up through uh, the next few months, maybe I could even put more. Not sure yet, because of course that hasn't happened yet. But still, uh, that would mean the uh, per month goal would be $584.50 for the month, or for the three weeks, which we still are not sure about hitting. That would be 484 is that right? Was that right? Now I'm trying to figure out what I did right. Did I do everything right or not? Yeah. <laughs> that was three, four, seven. Right there, now I lost my spot. Seven, eight, four, three, five, four, eight, four. But I got three. Oh, fuck, I don't know. I'm going to have to go back and recap and see if I got everything right. What? Oh, wait. That, that's right, because... Uh, sorry. That was for the phone. I was just... Uh. Yeah, so the amount remaining for the three-week goal would be about 2138 and then divide that by four months, and that would be about 400-some-odd and then remove the hundred, no, that would be 500 some odd, you remove the 200 from that, 300 some odd, yeah. Okay, I do math good. Now, what does all that mean? That means we're getting damn close and I'm having to call Creepy and remind him every time that I talk to him and if he, if and when he watches this video, I'm gonna remind you again, Creepy. Get your passport. I'm gonna need him. I got my passport, I got it. Right here. Got my passport. So, all's good on that end. Just need your passport now. And, yeah, things are looking really damn good, and there's so much going on, and happen to do so much, and of course there's still also the other videos I still owe everyone, and um, needing to get everything done, not only in preparation for Gamerathon 3, but also to have enough time to do those. And, uh, yeah, there's a lot of so damn much going. It's really crazy. Though I guess I should mention uh, the current amount is two ninety eight per month, and so the uh, three weeks in Japan target is three thirty four fifty. So that would be thirty six dollars and fifty cents to go f to hit that target. Though I'm pretty sure I'm gonna. See about stretching it that far anyway, because it's so damn close. But, yeah, there's so damn much just that's gone on through this whole year, and it's. I mean, it's because yeah, at the beginning of the year, when I first came up with the idea of going to Japan for Gamathon 3, I. Well. Did I ever really think that I was never going to Japan? I don't. I was just like I don't know when, but I'm going. But yeah, there 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 was one delay from the fact that you know, it was supposed to take place in October. But even then, it's still happened a lot. It's still been extremely successful. Plus, like I keep saying, you know, me getting kicked off of Blip was one of the best things to ever happen to me. So yeah. Also, I'm gonna. I've been talking with James of Manic Expression and seeing about actually getting myself on the Manic Expression springboard. And if what he says is true, and that does actually pull in a uh, monthly stream of revenue, 
then, you know, even if it's not as much as I'm getting on YouTube, which I'm sure it won't be, uh, but still, it would be, you know, added to, added on top of everything else, every little bit helps, that's kind of the whole point of the whole Patreon campaign. Oh, that's the other thing I was wanting to talk about, because there was, a, because we are, you know, projected to come really close, but fall just a bit short, there was always the idea of having a supplemental sort of fundraiser. There was the idea of that back when I first came up with the idea of doing, you know, Gamerthon 3 in Japan in October, because I still thought, you know, we're probably not going to raise enough by then, and Patreon is such a weird new thing, at least it was when I was starting up with it, that I figured, you know, a lot of people would not really want to jump on to this whole monthly pledge thing. So, then I uh, was thinking at that time, well, maybe a Kickstarter or an Indiegogo to get that last boost right before going. And then when the, the delay came to go into uh, 2015 with it, I figured, okay, I'm not going to do any kind of Kickstarter until the new year, because then the funds can actually go towards Gamerathon 3 and then be tax-deductible, instead of having to say, okay, raised all this money in December, now I gotta pay a bunch of taxes on it, and then we get to figure out with what's left what I could do with Gamerathon 3, and then it'll be tax deductible for any ad revenue that I earn for the rest of the year. Uh, so I figured, you know, place it there at a good spot, but at the same time I'm thinking about it, I'm like, well, we're so damn close, and... I, you know, I, I still don't really like asking people for money, believe it or not. Uh, I mean, you've all given a hell of a lot, and I'm extremely thankful for that, but I still, I'm, I'm not like, that's great of you, now a little more, a little more, yes, yes. Uh, and the whole thing with the uh, Indiegogo kind of thing to supplement Gamerathon 3 is maybe it'll put, get that last push to get the month, or if it goes just fucking crazy, Maybe I could actually get a uh, 4K camcorder to bring along. I'll say some, something like that. <laughs> and have it look amazing and have everyone see just how many blackheads are on my face. You know, just stuff like that. And uh, at the same time, I'm like, well, the chances of uh, something like that doing really well, I, I wouldn't think it's that high. I mean, people have already given a lot towards Gamerathon 3. I, I don't think that everyone was just sitting and waiting to till the last minute and they have this big pile of money saved up. No, it, it's it's December. People are spending all their money. It's, <laughs> it's not going to happen. Uh, but also, I personally you know, feel like... I mean, uh, there was a thing with the Bones Kickstarter, which did really well, and I pledged to that way back when and got some Bones. And it was really nice, and I was like, cool, this is great. Uh, this was really a lot of fun. It was great to do something for these people and get something out of it. It was really awesome. And then the next year they did a second Kickstarter, even though their first went way beyond what they asked for. And it's like, okay, guys, now it's just like you're trying to get money out of us. And uh, similarly, with the Mighty Number no. 9 Kickstarter, uh... There was just the little tiny bit, it's like for, you know, they, 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 they needed this amount to make the game, they got, got way beyond that, and they got, they got the uh, pledge reward levels to port it to Vita, 3DS, Xbox 360, PS3, Wii U, Xbox One, PS4, just fucking like, ported everywhere. They got all the money to do that, and they're like, yeah, great, awesome, huge, super successful Kickstarter. Game's still not out. I mean, it wasn't scheduled to be out yet, so that's no surprise. But, there are starting more fundraisers for DLC. It's like, okay, guys, you're not done the game yet. You're already working on the DLC, and you're already asking money for it. That's kind of a dick move. So, yeah, there's that. And I'm, I'm looking at the idea of doing a Indiegogo at the start of the year. It's like, could it help Gamerathon 3? Yes. Could I possibly get enough for a 4K camcorder and a fucking Surface Pro and just, you know, go and kick all the asses all over Japan and make the best damn uh, 
uh, web series special in the history of web series. Maybe. But most likely, if I do get an Indiegogo going, it'll get around a hundred bucks if I'm lucky. <laughs> and it'll, the, the whole statement of, yes, you've all been giving me money for a long time, but please give me more, is kind of a, I don't like it when people will do it to projects that I've uh, contributed to, so why would anyone watching my show like it if I do that? So, I mean, Creepy's still, you know, hearing these from me and saying, hey, but you probably should. You know, we've been talking about this for months. This was the plan. You should continue with it. But, I don't know. I'm putting that out there. I guess everyone, you know, leave a comment for what you feel like. It, is it like, would you actually contribute to an Indiegogo if I had one and you would not do it to the Patreon because of the Patreon's monthly thing? You'd rather not risk forgetting to cancel. Uh, which, of course, you know, like I've said plenty of times, every time this comes up, I'm like, yeah, I'm certain that when Gamerathon 3 happens, the Patreon pledge levels will just <laughs> tank. And I'm okay with that because I know this, this is the big project. And also the whole thing with the uh, ad revenue on YouTube has really picked up. And I'm like, holy crap. I, I mean, like I said at the beginning of when I started Patreon, I think I said it. I, I know I thought it a lot, but I don't remember I said it. Um, the whole thing with le pledge reward being remove ads is, well... I'd rather people have to sit and watch a 30-second ad rather than taking money out of their pockets. So... Okay, Kuro. She agrees. So, yeah, that's... kind of... I, I feel like the ad revenue should be what I am actually working off of, even though a lot of times when I review something from the Asylum, you know, they'll hit it with something that I can't... Yeah. I guess the neighbors are doing something out in the lawn and the dog's going crazy. Hey, Tara, girl. Yeah, it's okay. The door's closed. She can't get in here. Unless they learn how to open doors. Yeah, you're not impressed. <laughs> so... Now I lost my train of thought. Yeah, the, uh, I'd rather everything be supported on the ad revenue instead of on Patreon. Though I still intend on keeping the Patreon going, because some people have said that they really like getting the email notifications every time I put a new video up, or at least a new episode up. I don't put every video, like this kind of video. Generally, I don't post it to Patreon. But the episodes, I do. And also, when I was doing the, um... Godzilla vs. Mothra Month with Creepy, even though the other videos were posted on Creepy's channel, I posted those to my Patreon feed, and people got email notifications of that as well. So, that all worked out, I think. Now, now there were other, th oh yes, now, other things that I was thinking of bringing up. Things that don't necessarily have to do with Patreon or Gamerathon 3, But rather Dino Sember, and specifically my review of The Lost World. I mean, I edited my review of Jurassic Park, and there were a few flaws here and there. People pointed them out, and I was quick to admit it in the credits and everything. But uh, there were other problems in other ways in my Lost World review, and it was mainly with how people kind of reacted that I saw what I did wrong. And I, because that, that was a review I did where uh, Razor Fist, the Rageaholic, commented on my video to say he disagreed, which perfectly fine, but, and he gave reasons why he liked it, and they were all valid reasons, uh, but I, uh, realized that there was a big issue where there were certain things that I said in it that I didn't properly explain. I'm not saying, I'm not saying here that I said it was shit, and you said it was good, therefore you're wrong, and I'm going to explain what, no. Is this I said I didn't like something, but I didn't explain why. And it's, it's like uh, Vince Vaughn. His presence in the movie I reacted very negatively to, but I didn't explain 
why and therefore the only thing people thought because it was the only thing that had any valid evidence for it, was, well, he saw the Nostalgia Critic episode, and Nostalgia Critic didn't like Vince Vaughn in it, so therefore Decker Shadow is just repeating what the Nostalgia Critic said. And the dead dog doesn't even like that kind of idea. So, yeah, you know, that's that's some bad shit right there. That's the kind of thought process going on. But I, the, the thing with Vince Vaughn was that I... Personally, I see him, and I just... Ev most of the things, most everything I see him in is romantic comedies. And I really cannot separate him from that genre. And I really, really don't like that genre. So that's kind of, Vince, every time I see his face, it just takes me out of it. So that's kind of the, what I should have explained somehow in the review that I didn't. And, you know, bad on me for fucking that up. But, uh, yeah, th I think a good way to explain it is if you have, like, say, Noah. Say it was written in such a way that was completely uh, in line with what was said in the Bible and the uh, religious organiz organizations actually did like that movie. Imagine if Noah's wife was played by Jenna Jameson. And she did a fine job, great performance... And everything else was written, you know, just perfectly sparkly fine. But it was Jenna Jameson. There would be a lot of people who would be like, what the hell is she doing there? No, no, as good of a job as she could do. It's really hard to separate her from, it's like, shouldn't she be spread eagle somewhere or sucking a dick? Maybe. God damn. Everyone's got to make noise when I'm recording. I gotta do the laser death eyes now. <laughs> uh, but yeah. So that, that, there was other things. I, I remember there was something else that... If I can remember now... Because, yeah, I wanted to talk about this. I turned the camera on and I'm like, dude... That's kind of how I am with every video I make, isn't it? Oh, well. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Things that I didn't explain. Uh, oh, well, there was the other thing with the little girl who did not die in the intro. And technically, in the review, I did not say she died. I said that the original story opened with... The original Jurassic Park was supposed to open with the little girl getting ripped apart. Uh, but I, it did, it, I did imply she died, even though I know damn well in the movie that Hammond said she's fine. And I was thinking of some way to make a joke about that, but I was strapped for time, and I was like, okay, cut that. So, that ended up implying that she died, even though she didn't. So, it's, it's kind of a thing where I'm learning more and more that it's important that you don't avoid saying something that you really should if you're going to go in a certain direction. All right. Everyone likes to point out they're really badly done work and say this was a learning experience I learned about this and that. no it's a learning experience whenever you do anything any kind of little flaw anywhere I just see that and I'm like that's going to bother me for years to come but I'm going to try and make sure the uh, reviews I do from here on out don't make that same mistake and oh yeah Jeff Goldblum I, in the Jurassic Park review, was very negative about Jeff Goldblum being in there. And I also didn't really... Uh, yeah, I didn't explain at all in that review or in The Lost World why. So, it comes off like I'm just, you know, sucking the nostalgia critic's dick. And why, oh why, do I not like Jeff Goldblum? Well, honestly, it's not that I don't like Jeff Goldblum. In certain uh, movies, I fucking love his performance because he has this kind of quirky nature to him. And in certain roles, that can work out very well, such as in the remake of The Fly, where you know, he was, for all intents and purposes, a mad scientist, and he was fucking perfect in that, in my humble opinion. But in Jurassic Park... 
he felt really tacked on. And yeah, he, he was a chaotician. And there is some, you know, outlier kind of stuff to that. But Cass was just very, very minorly involved in the story at all. And in the original Jurassic Park, not even really plot relevant. Uh, in The Lost World, they do reference it in a line, but they get it wrong. They're talking about quantum physics instead. Uh, but, yeah, chaos... When I, I did more research on what chaos is, I found it personally very fascinating and really regrettable that the movies did not actually delve into chaos. But... Jeff Goldblum himself is his... Uh, Quirkiness was okay for a side character in the original Jurassic Park, but the big problem I had with seeing him was remembering that he was the main guy in Jurassic in the Lost World Jurassic Park. And for that, when the uh, aspects of Chaos were so downplayed and his character was probably the most useless protagonist and his quirkiness just came off as, you know, movie self-aware humor time, it it just, you know, it brought you out of it every, well, at least brought me out of it every time. Razorfist really enjoyed it, and I'm, I, if I saw a uh, review of The Lost World by Rageaholic, and it was very positive, I would watch it, and I would probably enjoy his review, especially since he generally, he uh, says things that are objectively confirmable. It's just the, how you spot a good review. Uh, it's not someone who's just throwing a bunch of subjective opinions out there and is like, well, if you disagree with me, you're wrong. That's not how you do it. You, even if uh, it's like a Total Biscuit's impressions of Borderlands the pre-sequel. He hated it. But he gave a objective... He gave a plenty of objective reasons why and what exactly were the mechanics, what he didn't like about it, but he also tried to put himself in another's shoes and what someone would, would like about it, and in the end of the day, I haven't played it yet, but it seems like something that I would enjoy playing with the twins. So, you know, even if it is more of the same, I can deal with that for one more Borderlands, but I'd hope that a fourth game in the series would change things up, but I still want to play the pre-sequel. Now, uh, with, uh... Razor Fist, for example, he did a, a uh, review of Out for Justice, which, if you remember, I did the, a review of that for the summer of Steven Seagal. My review for Out for Justice was overly negative. His review for Out for Justice was overly positive. But, objectively verifiable things in the movie, we, we both, you know, showed the same film from a different perspective, and hopefully... If one agrees or disagrees with either of us, one could figure out for themselves whether or not they would like to see this movie, which is kind of the point of a review. And therefore, you know, I would suggest anyone check out his Out for Justice review, which I found very much entertaining. And, yeah, I, I really like watching The Rageaholic. It's one of those things. Ah. So now I'm sucking Razor Fist stick. Well, if I'm going to suck a dick, I'll suck Razor Fist stick. I mean... He's probably got a damn nice dick. Okay, movie over.